Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the NECA Toys R Us exclusive 2-pack, and this is the Prometheus, Two-Face, and Hentai Tentacle Monster. Wait, what? That's, that's not what these are? Okay, let's try that again. This is the NECA Prometheus, Toys R Us exclusive 2-pack, Battle Damage, Engineer, and Trilobite. Now I'm going to say right off the bat, <laughs> this is one of the weirdest things I've ever purchased. This really is. The more I look at this figure, the crazier it is. The crazier it is that it's sold at Toys R Us. Granted, even crazier that it's sold around Christmas time, where the store gets an all-time high amount of people in the store. And, yeah... Well, let's just say I feel like this video should almost be flagged, you know, 18 and above only. I'm not going to, but, you know, I'm going to put the disclaimer out here for anybody who cares. This one's going to get a little strange. This is a interesting two-pack, to say the least. The Trilobite is a very unique character. Yeah. <laughs> so that being said, uh, you know, viewer discretion is advised, I guess. So let's get into this two-pack. First off, let's have a look at the Battle Damaged Engineer. This is another version of the Pressure Suit Engineer, and it kind of fixes my problem with the last one. If you remember with the original one, I had commented that he was very passive, he was very bland and boring in that respect. Well, this one's not. This one's like screaming, burning flesh in pain, so... That's a complete opposite end of the spectrum. I still think this guy being a little more angry would have been cool, but we already reviewed this guy. Let's get him out of here. I mean, look at this new facial expression they gave him. He is screaming in agony and horror and everything. He is just messed up looking. His skin tone is darker. They've given him less of that shiny white, and now he's kind of a little gray. His eye is wider, and the colors around it are bleeding a little more. I looked and all of them seem like that. I don't know if it's a paint defect or if it's supposed to accentuate the battle going on, but I feel like it kind of works. His mouth is wide open, screaming. He's got his tongue in there, which is shiny and nasty. He even has his lower teeth inside. Good detail in there. Not often you get a character with a totally open mouth. Kind of a rarity. And it's hard to pick up on here, but they, I think they actually got the actor's teeth right. One thing I noticed watching the behind the scenes thing for Prometheus is this guy has some jacked up front teeth. It's like one of his front teeth is kind of going over the other one at an angle and they're, they're kind of messed up looking. And, and you know, I don't mean to be disrespectful to the actor or anything, but it's just, it just catches my eye that his teeth look like that. And they, for all I know, they could have been dental appliances. But... They kind of got that with this figure. They're very tiny, so it's hard to see. I don't think it's coming out on camera at all. But I think it's there. His eyes are also very different. The original one had these dark eyes with almost these halos in it. Well, that halo's gone. This one almost looks blood-soaked. There seems like he busted a blood vessel in his eye. And there's a little like dark red in there with a black pupil. And this one, he's got like the remake Freddy Krueger blind eye going on here. It's just bright white with the pupil in the middle. Gives it a cool effect having those two different eyes. And of course, as I referenced at the beginning, he's got the two-faced burn going on here. From what I saw in the movie, the way they filmed it was actually with the standard pressure suit design. I think they CG'd in all this burn later. But NECA did a pretty good job sculpting it. It all just is kind of on the surface and everything. He's got some scorch marks up here as it comes away. I don't know the way they portrayed it. He probably would have been burned more than just the side of his face like this. But, you know, whatever. It does continue down his neck and onto the front of the suit. A lot of, like, jacked up here. It's been re-sculpted to have that effect. Same with his shoulder. It's got more burn. Beyond that. It's all done with a paint wash. It's the same suit we had last time from there on out. Just painted a darker color, a much darker color. It doesn't have any of that reflective silvery. It's all just this burnt up mess. Which is another reason why I think the side of his face being clean is a misstep on the character design part. Because all of this is all burnt up and it kind of stops at the head. Still a cool looking figure. I definitely prefer him from the burnt side. He looks really awesome. 
But if you just watch my review on the original version, you know what's here. A lot of great detailing. The butt flap's not as dark. It's kind of funny. It's not as dark even here where everything else is dark. But a lot of the same detail. The hands also got an upgrade. They're these kind of grasping, angry looking hands. The veins are still there bulging out, but they look much cooler now. Same detail where he's got his fingernails and everything. So I really like these new hands. They both just have this very, very active look to them. This is what I wanted. And this one even looks like it has some like scarring to it. It's a little lumpy. I like it. I'm a fan. I think they did good on this one. And I almost wouldn't have minded just having these hands on both. But that's my personal preference. As with the other engineer, he has his ball jointed head. Mid torso ball joint. Pin socket shoulder. Limited up and down, but you can go around. A good bend at the elbow and rotate. Ball jointed wrist. Leg can go forward and back on that weird ball thing and you can rotate around. Good to see they actually painted onto the ball in here. You actually have the same detail. Though I have noticed if you move his diaper aside, it is very pale in there from the original figure. But they did get the paint on that ball, which is cool. So you have that. Of course you have upper leg rotation, which is hard to activate. Bend and swivel at the knee. And a ball joint at the foot. Now I'm very happy to have gotten this version of the character. I like it a lot more than the original release. I think if you were just wanting a single pressure suit engineer in your collection, this is the better of the two. Mostly going on the facial expression. I think if you'd given an angry facial expression to the other one, I would have said that's the one to have since this is very scene specific. But it's a cool version of the character. I like him. No real complaints about the whole thing overall, but it is just a redo of a figure we just got. We really just got these figures, and to have a redo so quickly, you know, there's just not much to say about it. It's not going to take points off for the figure, but it's just not as cool. It could have been cooler. But still, he is fine. Now, what I think is the real reason to pick up this set is the Trilobite, a very gruesome character. This is... Shaw's child, I guess you could say. Shaw and Holloway's child to some degree. But it's a big guy. He is huge. And I'd mentioned in my earlier reviews that I'm intrigued with this line from NECA because I don't think I can remember them ever doing a line where from the beginning they were planning so many different scales of characters. Now the primary thing I was thinking of was the engineers and the humans and the deacon are all different sizes. But this guy... It's a character unto himself that's just unique. I mean, the real body of this guy is very tiny. It's not a big body. But when you add on these legs, he is enormous. He has six long legs and then a tail. Each of these is bendy wired, so you can get all kinds of movement out of them. It's a really nice bendy wire, too. They all peg in with ball joints up here, so you have a fair range of motion, though I do have a tendency to having them pop out. But you can also rotate them up here. I guess we just get articulation out of the way. Yeah, you rotate them, ball joint, and bend like crazy. It's a lot of coolness on here. The end of each of the legs has this kind of crab claw on it. Now, one gripe I have is it appeared in the movie that he actually had different colored nails here at the end and not just the same flesh. That would have been kind of nice to have, but it's a minor nitpick. Something a little more than a minor nitpick is this leg of mine, which is the front I guess it would be his left. Looks like it didn't come out of the mold right. The paint's not on it right. It's all kind of jacked up. I'm not going to return it over it. It's fine. I probably won't notice it in a little while. But just a note that it is wrong, I guess. And then at the back of the tail, he has this kind of devil pitchfork thing going on, which I like. Kind of reminds me of... It's very insecty, earwiggy or something. But each of the legs looks different too. They each have different ways they're constructed. Some of them have these little like pores or something. Even on the body, there's like some off as a nose or what. I don't even really know. I assume this is the tail back here, but for all I know, that could be the very front. I think it's the back though. But it's a squid, so I guess it really doesn't matter. But he has these kind of like orifices on it. I mean, it's all that Giger influence. It's all very sexual design based. So. Yeah, once I turn this guy over, we're at the point of no return. Uh, this is where things get weird, guys. So we turn this thing over, and yeah, we're greeted by a ton of vaginas. Not even kidding, at the upper part of each one of these legs. I mean, what else do you call that? I mean, they're, they're messed up looking, but 
Uh, what else do you call that? It's, it's what it is. And then looking at the actual movie footage, all these little tentacles at the base of each one of them, it's hard to see, but there's another one. Each one of these plugs into its own little vagina. Just a very odd little creature here. On the other side, you can see a lot of the holes to allow the wire bendy to work. So it's a little broken up here. This guy's little flower pod looking things, whatever the heck those are. His jaw, you can see in there. But yeah, these has all these little tentacles. These are just flexible. There's no bendy wire in any of these. They just, there's, yeah, seven of these guys. You can just move them as you will. And then we move into the one accessory of this guy. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you, know, you have a crap ton of vaginas on the character, so why not give him an enormous cock? I mean, seriously, I, I just, I don't know what else to say about this. It's a tentacle monster covered in vaginas with a giant penis that you could attach to it. So it just goes right in there, there's a hole. Of course, I mean, what else do you do with a penis? And you just put it in the hole. And that installs right there. So now he has a giant erect penis coming out of the inside of him. The best part is this is a Toys R Us exclusive. This is sitting on the shelf, granted in an aisle where kids aren't gonna go. Actually, the store I found this in, it's, I think a lot of Toys R Us now, it's in the same aisle as the wrestling figures and the Marvel figures were behind it. So I guess kids would be in this aisle. Now Toys R Us has put their Toys R Us exclusive sticker right over the head of this thing. So it does get a little bit censored, but you see this from the back, you see that it's, they're trying to hide everything on it that's inappropriate, but you get this thing out of the package and uh, damn. So like I can say, it's a, it's a unique toy. I can honestly say I don't own any other action figures remotely close to this. This is something unique. I know the Giger design has always been sexual based. The head of the original alien was very phallic. There's plenty of other things. I think I've pointed out some of the queen figures have had some suggestive body shapes and things like that, but this is very overt. This isn't subtle, this isn't subtext, this is, this creature overtly is just made of genitalia. So, you know, if that doesn't offend you, then that's fine. I mean, the figure's fine. It doesn't offend me, so fortunately I don't have a problem with this figure. I kind of expected it going in, but, you know, if that's something that's going to push you the wrong way, rub you the wrong way, I would definitely avoid this character. I mentioned the articulation and the bendy wires in this guy. He really is impressive. This took a few seconds and I was able to get him just really wrapped around the engineer. He really can just move those tentacles just fantastically. The bendy wires will allow even more than I've done here. I've just kind of was trying to do this quickly to get it for the review. Now, one thing you may notice is they did give us an engineer with an open mouth and they gave us the impregnation device of the trilobite so yeah you can reenact that if you want i don't know if i'm going to i really don't know if i want that on my display shelf you know it's it's a little different yeah so that's something you could do with this action figure it's definitely a unique two-pack and while this character doesn't offend me in any way i, I really don't know if i need a interspecies oral rape being depicted on my display shelf. I really just don't know how I'd feel if, say, my parents came over to visit and walked in and saw this. It just could be a little awkward. So I may put it in a more benign pose in the end. But overall, this is a solid two-pack. If it's not going to upset you in any way, shape, or form, then I would recommend picking it up if you're a fan of the movie. And the Trilobite's not really an iconic creature. It's not going to be as iconic as pretty much anything else in that movie. I think the human characters you spend a hell of a lot more time with. The Deacon looks like the original alien. All kinds of different things. The space jockey, engineer, they're big parts of the film. The Trilobite is... Honestly, I felt when I saw it, it was, okay, well, we did all this, people are probably pissed off we didn't make an alien movie, let's put some kind of weird facehugger illusion in there. So we got our giant, creepy facehugger. The thing with this is, because it's so much larger than a facehugger, and it doesn't 
holds so close to the face. We get to see all the inner mechanics of how it works. And if you were to look at a face hugger, it has the same basic concept. I mean, the underside of a face hugger bears a striking resemblance to a lot of the other parts on this character. And I don't know if it was ever shown in the movies, but I mean, there is supposed to be like a something that comes out of here that goes down the people's throat to impregnate them with the alien creature. So it's not that far of a stretch. It's just this is much larger and much more overt. But yeah, I do recommend this two-pack. I think it's cool. I think it's hilarious that it's being sold at Toys R Us over Christmas time as well. That just kind of cracks me up. And I would definitely recommend supporting it if you want to further support the line. As far as I've heard, NECA may still be shaky on the release of Series 3. And I would definitely want to do everything I can to push it over to make sure that happens. So I will definitely be picking up the releases as they come. I'm very excited for the Deacon and David coming next year. So that won't be much of a struggle to get me to buy those figures when they come out. But this thing, while it may not be everybody's cup of tea, I dig it. I think it's cool. And I think each of these figures would look good on their own, but I think they look best when posed together. Just maybe not quite as suggestively as this. Be sure to check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. There you can take a look at the less perverted toys that I have. And until next time, it's been another Outside the Box Review. Prometheus has landed.